Yo, what's going on, shroomies and shroomettes? It's your guy with the fun guy, Easy Blue Thumb, and we are back with another one. And in today's video, we have our brown rice saga. I will be taking you from start to finish. We leave no grain unturned. Let's get it. Let's go. Okay, okay. To start off, we have three two pound bags of whole grain brown rice, and we are going to prep, dry, jar, and pressure cook our rice and prepare it for whatever inoculation we choose. So, we're going to bring our water to a boil, and I do not do anything with the rice beforehand it is straight out of the bag and into the pot we do not rinse we do not wet nothing straight from the pot into the boiling water and we're going to set our timer for eight minutes And as you can see, after adding the second portion of our rice, we have a bit too much water inside of our pot. So I'm going to go ahead and extract that water, lower the temperature on our stove and bring our pot to a rolling boil. And we're just going to continue to stir throughout the eight minutes. We don't want our rice to stick to the bottom or stick to itself. And there you go. After eight minutes, this is what we have. Beautifully prepared rice. We uh, separated some and put them on plates to dry, soak up all that extra moisture, whatever's on the grains. And this is how you would want your rice to look after we are done. As you can see, the rice is not sticking to each other. And it's barely sticking to the spoon. You know, once we get all that extra moisture, we will be good to go and we can jar it up. So I'm going to continue to stir this. And we're going to let it sit for about 30, 35 minutes, and then we will jar it up. All right. All right. So we have our jars pretty much filled to the top, just enough space to leave for a break and shake. And this is not the full three pounds of rice for three pounds of rice. We do get nine quart jars and I will be filling this with nine quart jars. I just needed to go and get two more jars. And I also have one unmodified lid in there just to test and show you that you do not need a modified lid when you prepare your grains. All right, now that we have our lids covered with our aluminum foil, we're going to go ahead and pour our water and about a little less than halfway up the jars. Now, I'm using a 22-quart Barton pressure cooker, if you're wondering, and this is how I set it up for my seven jars. And we're just going to go ahead and make sure the lids are not fully sealed, about a quarter turn loose, so that way the pressure doesn't build up and we have glass all in the inside of our pressure cooker. All right. So we already built up pressure in our cooker for about 15 minutes. We're going to go ahead and add our weight and build up our pressure now to 15 PSI. And once it reaches the 15 PSI, we will then start our 90 minute timer. 
Now, I just want to be clear. I'm not giving you instructions on how to use your pressure cooker. I'm giving you the formula that I used for my pressure cooker. Please read your manual before you start messing with any type of pressure. Make sure your gasket seal is oiled and not dry, but I'm not telling you how to use your pressure cooker. Figure that stuff out before attempting to use a pressure cooker. All right, so now once your weight gets to wobbling like this, we now set our 90 minute timer and we kick back and wait and wait and wait and wait some more. Once our 90 minutes is up, we then depressurize our pressure cooker. And honestly, I did not really let this sit for too much longer. We want to go ahead and shake our rice right away so that way it's not clump together so mindful this is very hot I don't know why I'm doing this bare hands we're just going to go ahead and tighten our lids before we start shaking them up now for the lid with the X that is our unmodified lid Just give these a nice shake. Make sure we redistribute any moisture that's in there and make sure our grains are not all clumped together. And we're just gonna loosen our lid back up on our unmodified and we are gonna keep the aluminum foil on top of that lid as well to prevent any contaminants from uh, creeping up in that thing, you know? So for our first pressure cook run, we sterilize seven jars. And for the next run, I have two more jars that need to be sterilized. So all in all, we used three two pound bags of whole grain brown rice and nine quart jars yes sir your boy done went and copped himself a fresh flowy and we are good to go baby so i still prepared my workspace the same way ac off for about 30 minutes and after that i let the flow hood run for about 30 minutes while my jars cooled down i went and showered Put on some fresh clothes and we are good to go. I'll be lying if I tell you I wasn't nervous right now. I don't know why, but first time using the flow hood jitters, I guess. So while we have our scalpel cooling, just going to go ahead and pop the lid on our jar and we're going to pop the lid on our agar cup as well. Now though my hand is blocking um, I'm cutting this into small triangles. You'll see once I'm lifted out. I'm using triangles instead of square just to eliminate that one extra cut, just like cutting a pizza. And I'm going to add about three to four chunks of agar to each of our quart jars that we have. And 
Now, if you notice, I did not flame sterilize my scalpel in between the transfers. And I'm doing that because I feel like my scalpel sterilized, the agar dish is sterilized, or the environment that the agar is in is sterile, and my rice should be sterile. So I'm not too worried about the flame sterilization, but when I move on to a new agar dish, of course, we're going to sterilize and then proceed. To be honest, if I wasn't working in front of the flow hood, I would more than likely sterilize my scalpel after every two cuts that I make, just because I wouldn't have that extra security of working in the sterile environment. Yeah, I'm, I'm hyped that I got out of that still air box. And with our jars being almost full to the top, they mix pretty well. And I found out if you just kind of give it like a nice little vibrating shake that the agar just falls down to the bottom. So there we have it. We have one jar down and three to go. Just want to show you guys what it looks like when the agar actually has some color so you can see it. And that little bit of a vibrating shake definitely worked out for me. And a little bit of a razzle dazzle at the end. Make sure everything is distributed evenly. Now you got to be careful. The agar loves to stick to the glass. And once it's stuck to the glass, it's kind of stuck to the glass. So you want to kind of just move swift with that shake. Last but not least, we have our unmodified jar. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that down. Now the jar is fully sealed right now. So we'll pop the top just as normal. And we're going to make our normal pizza slice cut in our agar. And this one had a little mushroom growing out of it. I'm going to be honest with you. Working in front of the flow hood is so relieving a beautiful feeling the still air box is cramped <laughs> it takes way more time to do what you need to do believe it or not even though you can just think hey it's a still air box you pack and go no this is beautiful i feel free i'm able to do more with the time and I was able to create more content, which is beautiful. It looks appealing. Man, the flow, flow hood is winning right now. So hopefully it does its job and we're able to see some nice mycelium growth within the next few days. Give this the last shake. And we'll set these babies in the incubation box and check on it in a few days and see what we have. Hopefully the rice is good, which I think it would be. We, we took the necessary steps. We did our thing. We should be good. No worries, man. We're going to go ahead and clean our jar with our 70% ISO. And we are placing the foil cap back on our lid 
to prevent any contamination from getting inside our jar. We're going to crack the lid with a little bit of a quarter turn just so we have that fresh air exchange. And we're going to set these bad boys in our incubation box and check on them in a few days. Hopefully we have some beautiful mycelial growth, which I think we will. I have faith and confidence. Yes, yes, let's go, baby. We are nine for nine. Let's go. That's crazy. I wouldn't think that eight days in we would have this much mycelial growth out of this brown rice. But it's doing very, very well. It's definitely a dope feeling knowing that you can provide yourself with all that you need for your at home mycology. Because this is a big thing for those that work on a budget. If you can get your hands on a pressure cooker and some brown rice or popcorn or whatever grain you choose and you follow the techniques uh, that others set out or whatever you find from your research and you can provide yourself with everything that you need. That's dope. So this is a good feeling. And if you got this far, you should definitely be proud of yourself. So pat yourself on the back. And even if your results are not the same as this, just go at it again and just keep trying. So I'm going to let these bad boys rock out for another day or two, and then I'll do my break and shake. I appreciate y'all for vibing with your boy. Y'all be easy. Peace. EasyBlueThumb.com is up and running. We have t-shirts, hoodies, slides. Go cop your granny a mug while you're at it. I appreciate the love and support. Go check it out. EasyBlueThumb.com. Let's go. Thank you.